What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here. Welcome to Marsman Gaming. In this video, I review Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Ever since Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was announced, officially in February of 2022, I was excited to see the return of my favorite iteration of the franchise. From longtime Call of Duty fans to new ones, people of all groups are hyped to try the next Modern Warfare due to its previous success, making $800 million in its opening weekend. It seems to show that the series is not only succeeding financially, but it showed that this game was a general success when it comes to the gameplay. But the big question is, with the failure of Vanguard, does Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 lead the franchise in the right direction. Does Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 meet the standard of previous games? Should this game be considered the best shooter of 2022? In my review, I give the good, the bad, the ugly, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Let's start off with the good. One of the best parts of the game has to be the gameplay of Modern Warfare 2. I think Infantry Ward found the secret sauce when it comes to the gameplay mechanics of this title. I know this may sound bold, but the Call of Duty game has the best general gameplay we have seen in a decade of the franchise. It matches the level of fun to Modern Warfare 3, which released back in 2011. Drifting closer to the realism is when the Call of Duty games are at its best. I was happy to see that some of the issues seen in the beta were fixed, which only heightens the experience. Activision did the right thing here or copying the movements from the previous Modern Warfare. It isn't broken, don't fix it. In this age of modern gaming, where most games release titles with barely any sort of content, it seems that Activision found a way to break the barrier and actually deliver a game that actually has a lot of things available at launch. Overall, this game has 51 guns, 12 map, and many modes to play in your first taste of the game. Compared to other live service games, this seems utterly limitless. I've always been a fan of Call of Duty's ability to feel like there is always something to do or grind for. Not only does Modern Warfare 2 reintroduce old content from previous titles, but they do a great job of introducing new modes and concepts to keep things fresh. To this day, Prison Rescue is still my favorite mode to play. This game really does push the limit on what the old consoles can handle because this game easily is the best looking Call of Duty game in the series. In both the campaign and multiplayer, Infantry Ward has really stepped up the details on overall fidelity and look of the game. The combat looks as good as possible, and really the campaign cutscenes are just fantastic and make you really feel the intensity of these types of situations. The level design also looked very detailed, and different locations were all diverse, which gives the game character. With the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the issues I have with the campaign of Modern Warfare 2 is the over-the-top softness of the story. Over the years, Call of Duty games have had some badass adventures that really convey themes of war. Whether it shows off the brutalness of combat, the massive loss of life, or just the cool nature of some of the characters we have come to know. It seems that Call of Duty drifts away from their predecessors and just concludes that no one dies in war. Throughout the story, there's not a single instance of the good guys really losing anything. The villains in the story seem to be either too incompetent or there is a protective barrier over characters like Soap, Price, or Ghost. It seems that due to the monetization practices that Activision is including, that basically they don't want to kill off any major characters because that means they can't use them in any sort of operations expansion passes, which means that they are protected from any death or dismemberment. I mean, I'm not asking for an absolute bloodbath, but for God's sakes, there was never once in the playthrough of the story that I felt one of my favorite characters might be taken out. It does not give off the vibes of an actual conflict. COD stories for the most part have always been pretty solid. It seems like this campaign has some good moments, but overall, it seems they missed the mark. In my first experience with the COD Modern Warfare 2 beta, I generally had a positive experience with the maps overall. However, as I continue to play through them, I started to feel a disdain for the map design due to the condensed nature of most of them. Out of the 12 maps overall, I pretty much dislike all but two of them. I feel like these maps have some really great potential in the overall look and atmosphere. They fail on the layout, making them feel limited. I was constantly spawning into gunfire because of the how small they are. Future maps need to be adjusted, especially for the quick death times this game has. The gunplay of this game gives me mixed feelings. In some cases, guns like the AK-47 or the Tag v are really great weapons that can clean opponents with powerful shots and great recoil control. Then we get guns that are utterly useless, like the M16, that makes you feel like I'm drunk when I'm trying to fire it. In my review of the COD Modern Warfare 2 beta, I discussed the horrible balancing there was between these weapons, and it seems like that they did not heed my advice. They really need to fix the inconsistency of weapons in this game because the absolute frustration that comes with using guns like the M16 makes it feel less as fun as it should be. One of the worst aspects of the game so far has to be the lack of a real progression system. So far, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has a major problem. They're forcing the player base to use a weapon unlocking system that drains the fun out of the entire experience. For generations, Call of Duty games as a whole have used the same progression system throughout every single game in the series. You level up your character and as you progress through that entire tier, you end up unlocking new guns that you can try and then unlock attachments for. And as you use those weapons, you gain the ability to unlock new attachments on your weapons to use in matchmaking. Infantry Ward seems to want to change things up because they overhaul the entire concept or progression system that is based on using guns of a similar tree and by that method, you eventually unlock new guns by leveling up. This system is completely idiotic because the fact is, 
you're forcing players to use guns that they don't want to use in order for them to unlock the better and more more of their favorite weapons overall. What's worse is that even if you max out the weapon, you cannot actually unlock all the attachments for that gun unless you do the same for all the guns in that family tree. It's sort of confusing why Infantry Ward would drastically change the system that had worked well for so long in favor of a progression system that truly annoys me entirely. Lastly, the UI and the attempting of playing with your friends online is the worst and most frustrating thing for me in this game. When looking at the UI, I physically can't comprehend how bad this UI is. The basic function of a UI is to help the user navigate the menu in an effective way with little to no difficulty. Activision seems to want to test the patience of its entire fan base with the inefficiency of this system. I've never been so confused or angry navigating a menu before. Infantry Ward has followed in a trend that recent games and streaming services have done and have used horizontal boxes to organize their content. To be honest, this format is not only unappealing, but the amount of steps you have to complete in order to invite a friend to play is over the top and unenjoyable. The UI itself has a lot of problems, but the game servers are an entirely different issue. I had mentioned in my review of Modern Warfare 2 Beta that Infantry Ward should be concerned with the instability of their servers. I do not believe these servers are to the level of Battlefield 2042, but it is a pretty bad sign that almost in every playthrough I've had of this game, there was an instance of my game crashing, servers getting disconnected, or even my screen stays frozen for several minutes. It's not the best look for a game company that has nearly a thousand people working on it. These issues should not only be addressed, but the reality is they should have never been issues in the first place. Overall, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 has positives and negatives. The overall gameplay of the title feels fluid and is the best aspect of the game. Even being a live service game, Infantry Ward has put a lot of work into adding a good amount of content to this title at launch. It's a good sign that this did not need to be added in. There seems to be a lot to do in this game and that's always a positive for me. The atmosphere and look of both the campaign and multiplayer is possibly the best of the entire series. With that being said, the story seems to be soft and never actually feels like a conflict that is worth fighting for. The weapon balance and map design is just bad since they seem to still can't get it right. The UI and the progression system nearly ruined the experience in the multiplayer and good thing the gameplay is as fun as it is. Overall, I'm giving this game a 7.3 out of 10. This year's Call of Duty easily beats Vanguard in overall success and user experience. Within Modern Warfare 2, there's a really fun game that has great mechanics that reminds me of the classic COD experience. Even with the negatives, I can say this is roughly in the top three best Call of Duty games in the past decade. It's tough to call whether this Call of Duty game will be the best shooter of 2022. But one thing I can say is that I hope that Infantry Ward can make the tweaks and fixes necessary so that we can all can agree confidently that this is a gem in the making. Thank you guys for watching. If you haven't done so yet, hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Please join us on social media on Twitter and Discord and as located in the description below. If you want to support the channel, you can always send some donations or join our Patreon and as located in the description below. Till next time, this is Marsman from Marsman Gaming signing off. Peace.